A puffing crossing is a pedestrian user-friendly interface. If you take the first letters of those words, it spells out puffin, but only with one F. The reason it is user-friendly is a puffing crossing to the more modern crossings, and they're quite clever. They have sensors on top of the traffic lights and sensors on the road to monitor traffic levels and pedestrian levels. So for example, if someone presses the button wanting to cross the road, the sensors might see there's a car coming and let that car pass before the traffic light changes, so not to startle and surprise the driver. Or if the pedestrian presses the button and there's no cars, the lights may change immediately. Where on traditional Pelican Crossing, when the pedestrian presses the button, you'll typically have to wait six to seven seconds before the light changes, even if there's no cars coming. The sensors can also influence how long the lights stay red or green for. So for example, if there's lots of pedestrians looking to cross, it might stay red for the cars for quite a while to let all the pedestrians cross safely. Some puffing crossings are even helpful for visually impaired pedestrians. There's a secret cone underneath the box you press. And when the cone rotates, it tells pedestrians the lights are on green man so they can cross. When it stops turning, it means do not cross. It's a red man. Puffing crossings can be identified by the box you press to cross the road. On the box, there will be a red and green man, and the button just below that box, like shown on the picture here. If you continue to watch the video, you'll see the difference between the box on a puffing crossing, a pelican crossing, a toucan crossing, and an equestrian crossing. A pelican crossing is a pedestrian light controlled crossing. If you take the first letters from those words, it becomes pelican. So, like a pelican, just spelt slightly differently. On a pelican crossing, when you press the button to cross the road, you will get a wait light. The red and green man will be displayed on the opposite side of the road on the traffic light pole. As previously discussed, a puffing crossing has sensors on it. This will help to ensure the traffic light only changes when the crossing is clear. However, a pelican crossing is not that intelligent, so it needs to have a flash and amber phase. This is to allow pedestrians to finish crossing the road before the cars proceed. So in summary, flash and amber to drivers means allow any pedestrians to finish crossing. If there's no pedestrians already crossing, then proceed. You do not need to wait for green. If you say the word two can slowly, it becomes two can, as in two types of road users can use the crossing pedestrians and cyclists. Two can crossings can be easily identified. On the yellow box there will be a green man as well as a green bicycle or a red man as well as a red bicycle. Depends on what stage the crossing is at. It's also quite common to have a bicycle lane approaching a crossing. Equestrian crossings are quite rare, but you may have heard the word equestrian when watching the Olympics. Equestrian crossings are also sometimes called Pegasus crossings, Pegasus being a mythical flying horse. Either way, these crossings are designed for horse riders. Like shown on the picture, the yellow box will have a red and green horse rider on it, rather than the traditional red and green man. It's also quite common to find two buttons, one a pedestrian level and one a horse rider level.
Most people normally know what a zebra crossing is, as it's easily identified by the black and white stripes on the floor and the black and white stripes on the poles, called Belisha beacons. Of course, black and white stripes, like the black and white stripes of a zebra, but is a zebra black with white stripes or white with black stripes? On a zebra crossing, you may notice the dotted white line before the crossing. This means you must give way to pedestrians, including pedestrians who are already on the crossing, and also give way to pedestrians who are looking to cross. On approach to most pedestrian crossings, you will have zigzag lines. And these zigzag lines mean you must not park and you must not overtake the leading motor vehicle. The reason for this is if someone parks within the zigzag lines, it is restricted view of the crossing and you might not see someone crossing the road, so there could be a risk of hitting them. If someone has stopped on the zigzag lines, then you'll need to approach the pedestrian crossing with extreme caution, like you would a closed T-junction when you can't see what's coming. Approach very slow speed, crawling if necessary, being ready to stop immediately if you see a pedestrian walking in front of you. It's a similar reason why you must not overtake within the zigzag lines. The vehicle in front could be slowing down to give way to a pedestrian, for example, on a zebra crossing. Attempting to overtake the slowing down vehicle could result in you hitting a pedestrian. Pretty scary stuff there. So do not overtake within the zigzag lines. It's extremely dangerous and would most definitely get you points in your license and a hefty fine. If you felt like someone was going to overtake you within the zigzag lines, it could be a good time to use your hand signals. When it's safe to, put your hand out the window and do the slowing down hand signal to say to them, you need to slow down and do not overtake me. I am giving way to a pedestrian.